Oak Creek Theater presents Reader's Theater by Black Sheep Productions. A loud echoing of footsteps on a hard surface floor is heard. Are we all here? Greetings, followers of Thebes. My name is Deanna Roche. I am stepping in for your director, Jamie. Apparently, Jamie had a medical emergency and will be unable to finish this production. I am just here to guide you in your characterization and help this play become an evening to remember. I told you they weren't coming back. I'll just step up and take on another role, like last time. Yes, yes, Terry. We all know that you can, but should you? Yeah, Terry, why not share some of the love? There's no use arguing, my dears. We all know what Jamie said last night. <laughs> Under duress. Uh, what did Jamie say? <laughs> that, oh, uh, Terry uh, everyone, everyone, I think we should all forget about what was said last night and just let our new director lead us. We should do some warm-ups. Who wants to start? Oh, okay, I, I can lead. Uh, we will do some vocal exercises and follow with some stretches. Mm, should I start with tongue twisters? Um, baby llama? Oh, I got it. Baby shark. Oh, <laughs> you got to be kidding. Can't we just skip it tonight? This is only a rehearsal. Does everyone feel this way? Uh, okay, then. Uh, let's get started. I believe we are reading Moliere's Scapin the Schemer. Who is my fantastic Scapin? Here. Who is Okta? Oh, that would be me. I'm so glad to be here. Hello, my name is Sebastian Monger. I'm a third year at CU, getting my BA in broadcast journalism. I can't tell you how excited we I am. We can do detailed introductions later. Uh, let's just focus on the cast right now. Who is Leandre? Here. Uh, see, uh, you must be the beautiful Leocent. Did you expect any other? Deanna looks around searchingly for another female actress. Suddenly, she notices Jeanette. Ah, you must be our mysterious Zerbinet. Oh, that would be me. Oh, I, I see. Deanna looks back to Jeanette. You are Marine, then. Jeanette shakes her head no. That would also be me. Oh, I see. Why are you doing both roles? I'm very versatile. And we did not have enough talented women at auditions. Jeanette and Terry glare at Emily. It's not true. Jamie thought it was a great role for me, as I am very versatile. What role, then, are you? Well, Judy doesn't have a role. She reads the action. It's Jeanette. Time is getting away from us, so I guess we will just have to start and figure out the rules as we read along. Uh, where did you leave off last night? Halfway through Act One. You did not even make it through the first act? <laughs> no. That is why Kristoff is fuming. He doesn't come in until Act Two. <laughs> Sounds like we need to buckle down and get through this. A cell phone rings. Hey, handsome. What's up? Yeah, I'm at rehearsals now. <laughs> Did you hear about our director and- Oh. Emily notices all others staring at her disapprovingly. I guess I can wait until later. I'll probably have more to tell you then anyways. Bye, love. <laughs> Let's just start at the beginning and see what happens. All actors prepare, clear their throats, do me, me, me's, gargle, etc. Mm -hmm. Terry sings I'm so pretty while stretching as Sebastian does jumping jacks. Uh, okay, let's <laughs> settle, settle, action. 
Black Sheep Productions presents a reader's theater of Moliere's Skepan the Schemer. <clears throat> Act one, enter- Can there be worse news? Uh, excuse me, I was not finished. For a suitor? Excuse me, I need to say my line. What? Mine is the first line. This is reader's theater and someone needs to read the actions and that is me. Oh, my bad. We usually skip over that part when we're reading in class. <laughs> yes, Sebastian. Deanna turns to Jeanette. Julie, is it? It's Jeanette. Oh, I'm sorry. Jeannie is right. Um, it's we do need the actions read in reader's theater. Deanna looks to the whole troupe. Shall we start again? Jeanette cautiously looks around for the voice she keeps hearing. Act one, enter Octave and Silvestri. Could there be any worse news for a scooter? My case is desperate indeed. You say, Silvestri, that you have just heard at the harbor that my father is coming home? Yes, sir. Stop. Why are you reading Silvestre's line? Deanna looks around at the cast. Who is Sylvestre? Terry clears their throat in an authoritative way. The reason that I'm reading Sylvestre's part is that I'm Sylvestre. Jamie thought it'd be a great role for me, as I am very versatile. Deanna stares at Terry in disbelief. As a matter of fact, I'm Carl and Gerante as well. Jamie gave me the role of Octave last night, but... The producers must have sent Sebastian to replace our missing actor to play Octave. <laughs> Take that one, Terry. Wait, you are new tonight? Yes, I got the call this morning. I'm so excited. We really don't need him. Jamie gave me the role. Jamie said they were all great roles for me. As you are very versatile. I see. I do think we may need to get a few more actors in here, but we can move on with the reading as it is cast tonight. Where were we? I was my line next. Sebastian gathers himself back up to be in character, picks up his script, and starts to pace. He's expected to arrive this morning. This very morning. And he comes for the purpose of finding me a wife? Yes, sir. Sebastian stops pacing and whispers to Terry. A daughter of Signor Gerante? A daughter of Signor Gerante. Have the girl's been sent for from... Toronto. Ugh! Taranto. We're not in Canada. Taranto. Would help if he could read the damn script. Settle. Settle. And action. That the girl's been sent for from Taranto? Yes. And you heard all this from my uncle. From your uncle. Sebastian starts moving around dramatically as he speaks. Jeanette looks searchingly at her script, and then with annoyance at the... Vera? Who had it from my father in a letter? In a letter. My uncle knows all about our affairs. All about our affairs. Sebastian is still moving around dramatically. Deanna looks confused, and all other actors annoyed with Sebastian. Oh, for heaven's sake, tell me everything straight out. Don't make me drag it out of you, one word at a time. What more is there to say? You've described the situation quite correctly. You haven't forgotten a thing. Well, give me some advice then. Tell me what to do. I will tell you what to do, Sebastmonger. Sebastian suddenly balks at the misuse of his name. Stand in one spot like a normal person. This is a is reader's theater. We don't uh, wander around the stage. Robert sighs, gets out his cell phone, and starts to play a game on his phone. Jeanette starts to glare at the... Vera? Sebastian, you really need to reflect what is happening with your voice and without physical action. Let's settle and move on. Sebastian sits down and gathers himself together. Jeanette moves to a position for a better sightline of the pharaoh? What? Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Terry gathers himself back into character. 
Upon my word, I'm as much at a loss as you are. I'm in much need of advice myself. His coming home now has completely ruined me. Me too. When my father hears what I have done, I shall have a regular storm of reproaches showering about my ears. Reproaches break no bones. I would to God I could get off so cheaply, but it looks as if I should have to pay a bit dearer for your foolery. I think I see a gathering storm of reproaches ready to burst upon my shoulders. How the hell am I to get out of this mess? You thought of that before you got into it. Oh, you make me sick with your ill-timed moralizing. And you make me sicker with your mad goings-on. But what now? What am I to do? Where is there a way out? Jeanette glowers at the fair, anticipating interruption from her. Interscaping! What is it, Senor Octave? What's the matter? What's all this fuss about? You seem in trouble. Oh, my dear Scapin, I am undone, ruined. I am the most unfortunate of men. I am the most unfortunate of women. Good God, do we have to go through this whole part again? Can't we just start where we stopped last night? Here, here. I do not want to sit around for another hour doing nothing. Uh, well, I, I really would like to see what we have here. Deanna sees the disappointment in the actors' faces. <laughs> But I can make an exception for the night. It's uh, getting late. Uh, where did you leave off last night? We should start on page 10 with my line, then I shall be happy. Everyone got that? Uh, page 10. All actors flip through their scripts to page 10. Jeanette stares at the pharaoh with hate in her eyes. Pharaoh suddenly realizes that she is reading about herself and the person staring at her, the fair feels uncomfortable. Then I shall be happy. Without looking down at her script, keeping her intense look at the fair, Jeanette loudly states, Aside! A sensible girl, and not a bad looking one either. Without looking at her script, moving closer to the fair, Jeanette loudly states, Indicating scaping. Here is a man who, if he would only agree to, could be of the greatest use to us. I have forsworn the world, but if you both beg me very hard, perhaps. Oh, if begging is all that's needed, I beg you with all of my heart to find us a way out of this predicament. Leaning in closer and with an intense growling at the Thera. King Hyacinth! Have you nothing to say to me? I beg you, by all you hold dearest in this world, to help us. Oh, I suppose I must give in and take pity on you. Very well, I will help you. I swear I... Jeanette is now stretching as if she is stretching for a run. Okay. Go in now, and don't worry. Hyacinth goes out! <laughs> Jeanette lunges at the fair, and there's a bit of a scuffle. <laughs> Ow! The fair manages to escape the clutches of Jeanette. Oh no! Jeanette lunges at the pharaoh again, and again! <laughs> to the octave! The pharaoh is in dire peril. Jeanette is tearing at the hair of the pharaoh. Ow! Stop that! Ow! Almost there! Almost there! No! Oh, no! Jeanette composes herself and sits back down. The fair slowly climbs up from the floor, watching Jeanette warily. There is a silence. The fair sighs. The fair wonders why she volunteered for this job. The fair thinks to herself, readers' theater forbids physical action. The cast looked to Deanna, who is also wondering what she has gotten herself into. 
Deanna waves her hands and... Settle! Settle! Action! The cast, with the exception of Robert, eagerly watched for odd behavior to continue from the Farah and Jeanette. Jeanette collapses from exhaustion and starts to sob. Emily sighs, gets out a piece of gum and chews it, then gets out a nail file and starts to file her nails. The cast try to continue with the play as the crying continues. And you, brace yourself to face up to your father. The very thought of it makes me tremble. I have a constitutional shyness I can't overcome. You must stand firm at the first shock, or he will take advantage of your weakness and, and treat you like a child. Come now, try to look a little more confident. Be firm. Get answers ready for, for anything he can say. I'll do my best. Let's have a run through now to get your hand in. Michael, while reading his lines from the script, attempts to cheer up Jeanette. I'll rehearse you and your part and see how well you do. Come on. An air of determination. Michael tries to get Jeanette's attention, urging her to sit up. Head up. Eyes full of confidence. Sebastian also looks to Jeanette and tries to cheer her up while saying his lines. Like that? A little more still. So? Jeanette sits back up. Michael grabs a tissue, motions to Jeanette to wipe her tears, and offers the tissue to Jeanette. Jeanette takes his tissue and wipes away her tears. Thank you. That's better. <laughs> Imagine now that I am your father, who has just arrived, and answer me boldly as you would him. <clears throat> what? You good for nothing, you rogue, you wretch, you unworthy son of such a father, do you dare appear before me after your fine behavior? After the cowardly trick you have played me in my absence? Is this a result of all my care, you knave? Is this a fruit of my pains, the respect that you owe me, the respect that you pay me? It's... Wow. That was really good, man. I truly felt you tearing me a new one, like you saw right through me. Thank you. <laughs> and it felt good, too. <laughs> Gentlemen, enough. Can we... Please, just try to get through Act One. Are you saying we're not going to get to Act Two tonight? I don't believe this. Yep, I quit. You know, I, 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 I just quit. I, I, I don't get paid enough for this. Emily stops filing her nails. You don't get paid, man. It's Reader's Theater. Kristoff starts packing up his portal to leave, while Deanna, losing her cool, starts to shake with anger. But then Deanna and Kristoff notice the pharaoh reading what they are going to do. They stop, sit, and glare at the pharaoh, who is in turn now feeling a bit unsettled again. Why is this so hard for this group? Why can't you... Get through Act One. Please, just everyone do your job so we can get through this. Oh, I was doing my job. I was only to say the actions, and then I realized that, that, that she was reading the actions that I did not have in my script. And then I realized that her lines were better than mine, and that she really, really was doing my job, and... I was obsolete. I just wanted to squeeze her until she squeaked like a mouse. Like a mouse. Oh, but then I remembered when Jamie went after Charlie last night. Well, and that was before you came in, Sebastian. And, and I was losing it just like them. And wow, that was, well, that was really, really scary. the actions for you, Jeanette. And Christoph, don't worry, I can do your part too. Wait, your director attacked one of your actors last night? It was just too surreal to mention. <laughs> I checked. They're both in the hospital tonight. <laughs> this group is insane. 
I think we better call it a night. Everyone just go home and, and watch your emails for the next rehearsal. This group makes Medea look normal. I need to screen the groups I work with from now on. All actors, except Robert, start to pack up and get ready to leave. Robert looks at his cell phone at an angle and jumps up. Eureka! I finally got to the next level! It was just a simple angle that I needed. Robert notices everyone else is packing up. What's going on? Are we done? I, I didn't even get to say a line. As all the actors and the director log off one by one, Robert gathers his items to go home as well. When all have gone but the ghost light and the pharah, Robert recites his first line with staged theatrical perfection. Did anyone ever hear of such behavior? And now it is time for us to say, Good night and pleasant dreams.